Can you all see my screen where it says intro to podcasting? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Well, I am very happy to be here. Thank you so much to um, Barb and um, Susan for inviting me to speak to your group, as well as the people coming um, and registering uh, uh, for this through the Senior Center. I really appreciate it. Um, so this is a session that I basically put together last night um, about introduction to podcasting. It's really geared for listeners. And, and like Barb said, it's really meant for somebody who um, doesn't have any experience with um, the podcasting platform. So I hope this will be um, beneficial for you. And I'm also happy to share this presentation um, later on. Um, and we can kind of, Barb and I can kind of talk about how how to do that. I'm happy to share this um, after the fact. Um, okay, so let's get started here. All right, so just a little bit about me before we go into the nitty gritty stuff. Um, so I live in Iowa City. Um, I'm married to my husband, Scott. I think we've been married for eight years. It's hard to keep track now after you've been married only for a few years, but nevertheless, I'm married. I have two cats. Um, and um, in my previous life, I worked as a newspaper reporter. Um, so I, I was in the newspaper industry for about six years, um, starting off in Iowa City, and then I moved to Kansas City and then Ohio. And, um, and then later on, I became a photographer. So I had a photography business for about um, a decade. And then um, I was doing that. And then I also taught at Kirkwood um, for some time. I taught a lot of continuing ed classes um, for adults and um, especially older adults, um, as well as just regular age college students. And in my day job, I work as a software trainer at LeapFrog Technologies, which is in Coralville. So I've been at that position for about two and a half years. So um, while I like my job, I decided last year that I would start a podcast. Um, and I launched my podcast in May of 2020. And we'll talk more about my show later on toward the end. But I wanted to kind of go into the very, very basics of what a podcast is. Um, so I basically put together some bullet points of things that you hopefully will take out of this talk. Um, and, you know, I hope that it will be useful to you at the very least you, um, that you'll be curious about listening to a show, regardless of whether it's mine or somebody else's. Um, and just understand the technology that goes into getting a show to you. So some of this is going to be a little techy, but not too much, hopefully. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over is what is a podcast? And honestly, I will tell you, my parents actually did not know the answer to this question either. Um, so if you don't, don't feel bad. Um, so they were like, what is this podcast thing that you're doing? Um, so um, what this is, is a pre-recorded audio show that you can listen to on your computer, on your tablet, if you have a, um, an iPad or your smartphone. And um, the neat thing about the podcast format is it can be really anything you want. It can be an interview format, which is what mine is. It can be a commentary, basically like somebody just talking into the microphone. Um, it could be somebody reading a fictional piece or it could be like a mini documentary series. So really an audio show on the internet is as the best way to describe it um, that you can access on your personal device, computer, tablet, or phone. Um, now, what kinds of shows can you listen to? Literally, you know, anything you probably want. Um, this screenshot here is, it is basically showing the logos for a lot of the top shows out there. All these shows are highly produced. They're, um, you know, they have lots of money behind them. And then there's shows like mine, which basically I'm doing out of, you know, really just the love of the craft. So, um, but there are podcasts about really anything you can imagine, true crime, news, sports, food, science, et cetera. So um, if you have a topic in mind that you're interested in, you can find, you could probably find a show about that. Um, and if there is not a show dedicated to that, there's probably a single podcast episode 
dedicated to whatever you're interested in. So how do you listen to podcasts? Um, I'm going to just kind of, before we go into the technical, technical stuff, I'm going to kind of go back and zoom out a little bit and just discuss um, a, a few of these pictures that you're going to see in a little bit. So uh, listening to podcasts, you can basically use your phone. And so when you have your phone, um, you have a little microphone um, or a, a stereo system in your phone and you can just hit play in your phone or your iPad or on your computer. And if you're by yourself at your house, you can let that audio play throughout wherever you are. And that's really nice if you don't you know, have any distractions and if you don't care about distracting anybody and if the, anybody living with you doesn't care about being distracted. Um, more commonly, I think people are going to listen with earbuds or headphones attached to their phone. So that way they're not disturbing anybody. Um, a lot of times people will do this if they're going out for a walk. Um, and hopefully, you know, if it is, as it gets nicer in the next few weeks, we'll start seeing more people go out for walks. But people do listen to podcasts or music um, when they're out, out and about. And then another way is also via your you know, your ear, but it's through a wireless device, which is how I listen to podcasts. So this person here has a wire in it, a, like, like a little um, Bluetooth in his ear. And, um, you know, that allows you to move about without having your phone right there in your hand. So um, this is how I listen to podcasts when I'm doing chores around the house, when I'm working out, I can listen and, you know, maybe have my phone in the other room. So that's also very convenient. All right, so those are just basically three different ways functionally that you can listen. So how can you find the shows that we just mentioned a little bit earlier? So there are these little software programs and those are called apps. They are built into your device or they can be downloaded. And um, the logos that you see here are just some of the common apps that you can use to listen to different shows. Um, now, the good news is that you can use whatever app you want. Um, all these apps are available and there is an if factor if your phone has an updated operating system, that is probably a less of a concern. Um, that really only means, okay, if you have a phone that's, you know, maybe in the last, um, I don't know, maybe the last five years, you've had a new phone, you could probably access one of these apps. Um, that's not a big deal. It's not necessary to access every single app. You really only need one app to listen to podcasts. All right, so it doesn't matter which one, just, just pick one. Um, the logos here that you see here, Apple Podcasts is pretty popular. Um, I actually use this one. This is um, one that's lesser known, but it is, um, I think it's very good. It's called Downcast, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, there's also Spotify and also Google Podcasts. And again, these are just four of them. Um, there are probably about 15 or 20 different apps that are podcast listening platforms. Um, so, you know, you can pick whatever you want. So what I'm going to talk about in the next few slides is really the function of how to download an app on specific types of phones. So I'm really going to focus on the Android and the iPhone. Really, those are the only two different, two common phones that we have here. Um, you have an Android phone, likely if you have a Samsung, an LG, a Motorola, maybe even a Nokia or a Google Pixel. Um, basically, if your phone does not have the Apple logo in the back, you probably have an Android phone. And um, let's say that you want to listen to podcasts using Google Podcasts. That is our platform that we want to access. And so Google Podcasts is not going to be most likely not going to be already on your phone. So you have to download that application. And to do that, what you would do is on your phone, you have um, on your Android, if you have an Android, 
you have a, uh, a triangle that looks like this. It's a colored triangle. And that is what's referred to as the Google Play app or the Play Store. And so that is basically your doorway into downloading that Google Podcasts app. So once we find that app on your phone, and this is also something that you could find on your tablet. So if you have a, um, not an iPad, but maybe, um, you know, another tablet that's similar to, um, uh, to the Samsung or the, you know, whatever the tablet version is um, of the iPad, um, like a Microsoft even, you could find that logo. So once you find that logo, you're going to see and you, you're going to click on that logo and then it's going to open up to a search bar. And in that search bar, what you would do is type in Google Podcast app or Google Podcast. Um, now, if you didn't want to search for Google Podcasts, you could search for another podcast app like Spotify or Downcast like I use. It doesn't really matter, but you type in the word or the name of the app. And then you can see in this screenshot that you'll see the search results populate and you can see Google Podcasts coming up here in the third, third item. All right, so once you find that, you would select the Google Podcasts and then on the screenshot, it will um, give you a prompt to install that application. So then you would click install. Now for Google Podcasts specifically, you do need to have a Google account to access this. If you already are using Gmail, um, which is Google's email account, um, you can go ahead and definitely use it. And it, it might even just prompt you to confirm your Gmail account. Um, if you don't use Google as your email, you may end up having to create a new username and password. Now, regardless of which app you use, whether it's Google or Spotify or something, there is a possibility that it may just ask you to create a, a new username and password. Um, once you do that, if it does ask you this, just do it and then you won't have to, you know, likely you probably won't have to touch it again. Um, as long as that app is still visible on your phone. All right. If you are an iPhone user, um, and I honestly actually don't remember this because I have an iPhone, but I don't remember if Apple Podcasts is already on my phone, if it's already there. And if it wasn't, um, what I would have done is click on the app store, which is this blue um, kind of rounded square with the A in it. And then I would do a search for Apple Podcasts or whatever app I wanted to use and download that. Basically the same thing that I did in the Android version. All right. Um, okay. So there are other listening platforms, like I mentioned earlier. Um, these are just some of the other common ones. Um, Amazon Music is a relatively newer um, app for podcasts. Um, I think Amazon just started introducing podcasts last year in its system. If you do decide to use Amazon Music, I think for Apple users, it requires the most updated Apple or iPhone operating system, which I actually do not have. I have an older iPhone. Um, Downcast, again, is what I use. So when I got uh, to listening to podcasts, what I did was I went into the app store. Um, let me just go back. I, I probably most likely went into this symbol here. And in that search menu, I typed in Downcast and downloaded Downcast. And Downcast has been on my phone ever since. Um, and Spotify and Stitcher are the two other commonly used apps for um, for podcasts. Okay, so I want to actually pause here for just a second. Um, so I have covered a bunch of stuff here. Does anyone have any questions before I continue on what I've covered so far? 
And if you do have any questions, go ahead and unmute yourself. I have a question. Yes. I looked at the downcast and it looks like it has a fee. Oh, really? I believe the others are free, but maybe you could clarify that. That's interesting. I did not know that. It also has been like a million years since I've, um, oh, okay. You know what? I bet I know what you're talking about. Let me just look that up real quick. So downcast. Um, it, does it say something like, um, subscription or in-app, in-app, um, purchases? It has two ninety nine, dollars and it does under that say in-app purchases, oh, but usually it says free. Hmm. That's different. I have not, so my player does not show that it is, um, so, okay, so that may have changed. I actually don't know that because mine, it says, and maybe because I already have it downloaded, it's not giving me that indication. Um, so that's possible that they started charging a fee for it. When I downloaded it, since I've had it for a long time, um, I don't recall paying a fee for it. Um, so, you know, that's up to you. If, if you, if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. There's other apps out there as well. So, um, but no, thanks for letting me know that because, um, that's the first I've seen of it. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? I have a comment. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have, like I do, an Amazon Fire tablet, mm -hmm. you can't get into Google Store, the Google Play. Okay. But they've got a lot of stuff and I can always use Amazon Music, so. Yeah. But if somebody tries to do that, that's a fact I just learned. Okay, okay, that's good to know. Um, no, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, technology is changing so much and sometimes it's not unusual if you don't have a particular app available um, on a certain type of device. So thanks for sharing that. Anyone else have anything? Yes, I would. Um, will you be saying more about how to uh, get to these podcasts on a computer? Um, so I don't talk about that in this presentation, but what I'm, one thing that you can do is honestly just do a Google search um, for um, like Stitcher or um, that's actually what I do is I go to Google and type in Amazon Music and the name of the podcast, Downcast and the name of the podcast, Stitcher. So I, I type in the name of the app and the name of the podcast I want to listen to. And generally, I'm able to find what I'm looking for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? All right, we'll go ahead and continue. Um, and Susan mentioned here in the chat that Google Podcast is free. All right, okay, so we'll go ahead and continue on. And I wanna talk about basically what you can expect when you go into a podcast interface. So these screenshots are from Google Podcasts, but it's going to be very similar for any interface that you use. So let's say, for example, I want to look for This American Life. And so in the toolbar that you see at the top, I would type in This American Life. And as I'm typing it in, you can see that the results are populating and I see This American Life as my first search result. So once I have that, I find it, what I can do is, um, if I know that I like the show, um, this is an NPR show that's, um, I think, uh, broadcast on Sundays. Um, so if I like the show, and I know I like the show, I can subscribe to it. And so every show will have a little subscribe um, button in the phone app. and at least in the tablet app. I don't remember if there is something like that on the computer, 
Um, but if there is, then you can certainly take advantage of it. Now, clicking that subscribe option, um, first of all, it's free to subscribe. Um, secondly, it really it guarantees that you will have a new episode downloaded automatically on your phone without you needing to go into the show and having to look and see if there's a new episode. Um, so that's the beauty of subscribing, that you're not having to go every time and saying, oh, you know, I wonder if there's a new episode of whatever. Um, it's already downloaded if you have subscribed. Now, there's other components on the screen that I want to talk about. Um, so one is the show summary. So the show summary is going to be just right above the, I'm sorry, right under the icon or the logo there. And it will be basically a short paragraph talking about what the show is. And so that's something that might be helpful, especially if you're looking up something that you've never heard of before and you're curious, oh, what is this about? And so that will give you an, a sense of that information. The second thing is this um, item that says more episodes that I've circled here. And it's going to be very similar on a lot of interfaces. So when you click on it, your screen will then um, have a listing of some of the recent episodes um, listed here for whatever show that you're clicking on. And then the other thing that's really, um, I think is really important is when you click on a show, um, it will also have um, a little descriptor of what that episode is about. And so this is what we call show notes. And show notes can be anywhere from a sentence to a few paragraphs. Um, I will show you a little bit later what my show notes look like. I kind of take this pretty seriously. Um, I don't normally look at show notes when I'm um, listening to an episode, but if I happen to be listening to an episode and let's say the um, the author is talking, you know, if, if the interview is with an author, for example, and I'm really interested in this book that they're talking about, chances are they're going to have a link to that book in the show notes. And so I will um, look at the show notes for that reason and, and basically just hang on to that information so I can reference it later. So show notes are kind of, um, can be very useful. Now, you, you know, once you've uh, subscribed to a show, there's a few other considerations that are really important in terms of managing um, your, your experience with podcasts. Um, so the first one in this, this uh, screenshot on the left um, is showing of it from Google Podcasts. So Google Podcasts, you can see that the subscriptions tab is, um, is highlighted or is, is in blue. And so that's showing me that, yes, I've subscribed to This American Life. And so I know because of that, new episodes are gonna download. The screenshot on the right here is my list of downloads. So, um, it, so on my personal phone. So let's say I'm subscribed to the show called 99% Invisible. And at the bottom here, it's showing me that I have three episodes that are downloading. Now, the one thing to note is when you have subscribed to something, it will download the most recent episode. But let's say you go into a show and you want to listen to some past episodes then you would manually select them and individually mark them to download. So that's what that's showing here. That's why there's three episodes of the same show um, displaying here because I manually selected these three to be downloaded. But otherwise, if you just subscribe, then it will download one episode, most likely one episode a week. Okay, so there's my download. So something like this, I would have, if I clicked on this in the Google, Google piece, I would see anything new from This American Life in this tab. So the downloads item is also gonna display the number of episodes here too. All right, the next piece of this is again, really going into managing your subscriptions and settings. Um, 
also to ensure that your experience is going to be positive. So the settings is really represented by these green, I'm sorry, these uh, three dots here. And the three dots are going to be different in different apps. So um, my app is actually, it's down at the bottom here. Um, so usually three dots means um, that's where the settings are. Um, so when I click on the three settings, I'm sorry, the click on the three dots, I'm gonna see the settings piece pop up. When I go into settings, there are a few different options that I want to uh, manage. So first of all, it says auto download. Auto download not enabled. Now, if I click on this, it's going to bring up a bunch of, uh, you know, this screen here. So this, this subset based on auto download. And first of all, auto download new episodes is turned on and that is good. That's what I want. So I don't have to look for new episodes in my phone. Only when on, only when on Wi-Fi. I also want that turned on. I don't want any episodes downloaded when I'm not on Wi-Fi because that's going to really eat up my um, eat up my battery life, my phone usage really. So I only want to have phone, uh, new episodes downloaded when I'm on Wi-Fi. Um, auto download queued episodes. Um, so this is also something that you can turn on or off. I generally have it off because it's, uh, well, you know what, I'm sorry, you can technically have it, um, have it on, but I think I would have it off just because this is sort of conflicting with the Wi-Fi piece. Um, so only when on Wi-Fi and off when queued. So, you know, Th these two, I think, are consistent with each other. And then this here is saying that um, This American Life is what I'm subscribed to. All right, so I know that was really technical. <laughs> um, does anyone have any questions on this screen before I go any further? Well, <laughs> this is Monica again. Mm -hmm. I don't have the screen. Can you get me back to how you got on that? Please? Yeah. So what I did was, do you see anywhere on your platform, like where it says settings or if there's three dots anywhere? Okay. I am on and I just have library. Okay. What are you using? Like what's the device that you're on? I'm on an Apple and I'm using the Apple podcast. Oh, okay. Let me take a look at that real quick. I do have Apple on my, on my screen. Um, so if you are on Apple podcasts, I see the library. Um, click on, I don't know if Apple has that actually. Now that I look at this, browse, search. It's quite possible that Apple might not have it. Mm. Okay, I'll see if I can download. And that's okay, because I'm I am looking at Apple too, but I'm not seeing it on mine. Right. Um, I don't normally use Apple either. I use Downcast, but I have it downloaded just to, just in case. Um, All right, I'll check one other. Thank you. Yeah. Um, actually, one thing that you might you might do is if you go into an actual show in Apple, you're going to see the three dots there. You're going to see settings. Yeah, it's in there. It just takes you one deeper. So, Remind me, how is it that you get into podcasts at all? I have my Apple, op my, my phone open, but where do you start physically? Mm -hmm. um, so 
What kind of phone do you have? iPhone. Okay. So what you can do is, let me just go back for a second here. You can go into this. Um, so you may have to download it. If you don't have this on your phone, you may have to find it through the app store. Oh, I, I don't know whether I do or not. Let me look. Okay. I do, I do but I, I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll keep going and then we, we can come back for other questions. All right, so now we talked about subscribing and viewing the show notes. Um, all right, and then the settings. So from the auto download piece of it, and again, um, just from talking to a few of you, it sounds like the settings is going to be, it's probably in your app, it might be located differently. So it sounds like on the Apple podcast app, it doesn't show until you go into an actual show. Um, and so I can try to talk you through that after we're done here. Um, so once, um, and, and this is on Google, so the options might look slightly different on every single app. On the Google Podcast app, it will also ask you, um, do you wanna remove your, at the episodes that you've listed um, or that you've listened to? And do you want them um, removed after 24 hours, after seven days or never? So for my podcast, my, I'm sorry, my, my platform that I use, Downcast, Downcast eliminates them automatically, which is nice. I don't really want my podcast episodes sticking around and taking up space if I've already listened to it. The other thing you can do is if you are not enjoying an episode, you can also manually delete the episode from your phone. So if I, like this screenshot right here, if I swipe over, it will show me this delete box and I can just hit delete and it will eliminate that episode. The other thing that Google Podcast does, and I don't think my app does this, is it will actually give you a selection of when you want to remove episodes that you have not listened to. Um, for me right now, that is never, um, which is really bad <laughs> because I have over hundred hours of podcasts in my phone right now. Um, but if you wanna be disciplined about it, you can certainly give yourself a limitation and say, hey, I only wanna listen um, you know, I only have 30 days that I want to give myself to listen to something. So you can set that parameter um, on your platform if it gives you that option to do so. Okay, notifications and autoplay. So this is actually really kind of important, I think. Notifications, if you say yes to notifications, you're really saying, yes, I want pop-up messages on my phone alerting me that I have a new episode to listen to. Now, if you're somebody like me who consumes podcasts like on a regular basis, like on a daily basis, that's probably not necessary. Um, but if you're somebody who likes to be reminded that there is a new episode, um, go ahead and turn that on if that is an option provided. The other one is um, autoplay. So autoplay from Q, now, in this example, I have it turned off because I'm saying that I, you know, I, I'm saying, no, I do not want that episode to start playing automatically when I turn my phone on or when I turn um, on the app and open, the, open up the app. I don't want that to play automatically. I want to play when I want it to listen to it. So I have autoplay turned off. All right. So those are two other kind of functional things that I think if you have um, an understanding of it, it will make your experience with listening much more easier and hopefully something that you, you're able to manage, um, you know, in a way that you'll enjoy listening to podcasts. Okay, let's pause here before I go into talking about my show. Um, so what other questions do you have? I have a question about the word subscribe. Mm -hmm. I 
think subscribe means you're going to pay for something like a magazine subscription a hundred years ago. Right. Subscribe now mean it is free. Correct. Yes, that is a really good question. I want to go back to this slide that we talked about, um, that I talked about subscribe. And subscribe is really, um, let me just go back one more here. Subscribe is really uh, you telling the application that I want this episode, a new episode of the show downloaded on my phone automatically. So I don't have to go looking for it. And subscribing um, is free. If, if by chance there is a platform out there that asks you to pay to subscribe for a particular show, then stay away from that. But I actually haven't heard of that, but I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not going to assume that it's not out there. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, good question. So, so there's a, a chat question by Susan. Where do you go to find highly recommended podcasts? Wow. Well, okay. Um, so um, so so the easy answer, the the best answer for this is Google, <laughs> I think. Um if you go to recommend, if you just type in recommended podcasts, um, that is an indication, um, or the trail newsletter. Trail newsletter will have will have that. I'm trying to see if um, there is. I feel like there is an interface um, that would have that would show that, and um, I want to show my. Let me see if I can share my screen and get out of this for a second, because this might give you an idea. So if I type in Apple Podcasts, um, just as a Google search right here, um, it's gonna give me a bunch of options. And if I type in best, show best of 2020 say, um, you know, it's going to give me the biggest show. So really a simple Google search um, could potentially, um, you know, have that information for you that you're looking for. Um, there is another interface out there that I'm not finding that will have, have that as well. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's a good, good place to look. Google. When in doubt, go to Google. Any other questions before I continue? All right, we're going to keep going and I'm going to move over to my show. And so some of my favorite shows. So here's the thing. I had a hard time narrowing this down because I listen to literally so many shows. Um, I started listening to podcasts probably about six or seven years ago on a regular basis. And my husband introduced me to podcasts and he's like, here, you know, you have, here's an app, you can listen to whatever you want. And then over time I started adding stuff. And right now, like I said, I have over a hundred hours of shows I have not watched, but my favorites that I probably listen to fairly regularly are these three. Um, this first one here is the New York Times Daily, the daily podcast. Um, you can also listen to it on NPR, I think at four, four, four o'clock maybe, um, or six o'clock, I forget, but I listen to it in my phone. Um, it's a really nice, well, they have really good in-depth stories as well as just kind of a summary of what's happened in the news. Um, another favorite I have is the New Yorker Radio Hour, um, and it's a mix of news and culture and music. Um, so that's a really nice podcast that I really like. And then there is a show called Criminal that I absolutely love. And it, I love it in part because of the host, actually. Um, and the host, her name is Phoebe Judge. She is just a, a very, you know, not a flashy person. She's just very um, 
you know, somebody who would strike you as pretty reserved, but she is an excellent host. And um, it's almost like not really a true crime podcast as much as it is like, let's go back in history and analyze this crime and talk to this um, person who was involved in this investigation. So it's, it's really fascinating. Um, now, criminal is one that you sort of have to have the mental space for because it is, um, it is serious. Um, so those are just some of my favorites. Um, and, you know, if you want other recommendations of other things I listen to, I'm happy to provide those to you. Um, but yeah, those are just three. I have quite a bit more in my phone. Which brings me to my show. So... Um, so I started listening to podcasts, like I said, about six, you know, seven years ago, and I became a really avid listener of podcasts. Um, and in the spring of 2019, um, I was starting to think maybe I should start a podcast, you know, and I was kind of leaning toward um, starting a show related to older adults which is really puzzling even to me right now because I don't really have any sort of expertise with that age group. Um, I'm not somebody who grew up um, around my grandparents a lot. Um, but I think part of the reason was, you know, my parents are getting older, they're in their 70s now. And I have this just concern that, you know, that they're going to be okay when they get as they get older and you know that obviously is partly my responsibility too um so when i first started thinking about creating a podcast my first thought was maybe you know maybe i could do a death and dying podcast and the more i thought about it i was like that's really um not going to sustain my interest i'm going to get really bored with that and really depressed with that, probably. So, um, so I started thinking more about the people I know in this age group, meaning 55 plus, which is a really, really big range. Um, and just thought about like what made them unique. And so after I thought about the people I knew and really kind of who I wanted to profile, I decided, you know what, maybe I should talk about cool people who are doing cool things at their age. And that's really what it amounted to. Um, the name of the podcast came from a brainstorming session between me and my husband. And I ended up coming up with the name and designing the logo. Um, and my first interview was with, um, and I don't know how many people would know her, but her name is Beth Pelton. She is the owner of Body Moves Fitness and Wellness in Coralville. Um, she and I had an in-person interview in January of 2020, um, and she was my first episode. And then we went into quarantine, and I was sort of paralyzed from there because I'm like, what am I going to do? Because in my mind, I thought I'm going to have a local podcast and talk to local people and interview them in person. And then I think I had this sort of um, epiphany that, you know what, I don't have to do that. I can talk to people through my computer and record them and get their stories. And why do I have to limit myself to the local community? And so I started finding people um, throughout, uh, you know, and I basically decided to create a season. And a season in my head was 12 episodes at the time. So from January through roughly April-ish of two, uh, 2020, I recorded episodes, I um, edited them, and then in late May of 2020, I launched the podcast. Um, so when you launch a podcast, you have to sign up with a hosting platform. And um, I picked a hosting platform that's very popular in the podcasting community. It's called Buzzsprout. And Buzzsprout, um, once I uh, upload my file, my audio file to a Buzzsprout, um, Buzzsprout then sends it out to all these um, podcasting platforms. So then I don't have to reach out to them individually. So that's really handy. 
Um, so, um, so, and anyway, what I'm showing here is some screenshots from my own podcast here, if I were going through the motions of finding it, but um, Untrained Wisdom, and this is actually on Amazon's platform. Um, so I'm typing in Untrained Wisdom, I find it. And one of the things that actually Amazon podcast does that I haven't seen in any of the other platforms is they have this trailer at the very top. So this is my very, very first episode here. It's seven minutes long and it introduces the podcast. So this was, um, yeah, the very beginning. And then as I scroll through this, you know, I'll see that I have my intro paragraph here and then um, my list of episodes. Um, my list of episodes, my most recent one being at the top. So this episode here was released this past Tuesday. All my episodes release on Tuesdays. I just picked Tuesday as a random day. Um, but the trailer is always at the top in the Amazon platform, which is really interesting to me. Um, and then if I go into the most recent episode, you know, I can see my show notes and the show notes here, my show notes are rel relatively long. Like I said, it's, I have links to certain things um, so that readers can click on if they'd like, listeners can click on if they'd like. Um, there is one thing that does, um, I guess, bother me about some of the platforms, and this is one of them is that my links are not always displaying. And so I'm gonna show you my website um, because the website does display everything like it should. But one of the things I do include with all my shows is a PDF transcript of the show. So if somebody is um, having trouble understanding something or if they're he hearing impaired, they can click on the PDF transcript of that episode and read the episode if they'd like. Um, and I'll show you that in a little bit, but my first season, this is what I did. I found 12 people um, and I ran the first season from May through August, roughly May, end of May through, I think the, the last episode in August came out the day after the Dere show. Um, most of my guests were from Iowa, a few from Illinois one from New Hampshire and one from Nova Scotia. Um, so my third episode actually featured this couple. They're in Iowa City. Um, their names are John and Val Bowman. They're friends of mine. And I wanted them on the show to talk about co-housing. Um, they live in the Prairie Hill co-housing development. Um, so I just wanted to play you just less than 30 seconds of their episode. This is actually the first part of their episode, the intro. So I'll just play that for you here. Everybody here seems to be a perfect fit, fill in each other's gaps. It's a really good tight group. There are disagreements. Uh, there have been more disagreements than I anticipated, but I'm really amazed at how well we've gotten through them without any lingering grudges or anything like that. Everybody. Okay. So that is just a snippet of their first part of their intro um, for their episode. Um, I start a all my episodes with just a little bit of um, a soundbite from the guest. And then I go into the introduction and then I introduce the guests and then we go into the interview portion. Um, so after season one, I created a second season, which means while season one was happening, I found all these people to interview during season one's run and um, recorded them, prepared them to be released. So September, roughly September 15th through December 1st is when season two came out. Um, and so I expanded my geography a little bit with these guests. Um, the other thing to note is even though most of my guests are 55 plus, um, there is a segment of my guests, usually at least two guests per season, roughly, who are relatively younger, but the work that they do is specifically geared toward the senior population. Um, and so 
I have a guest. So this woman right here is Dr. Serena Liu. She is a geriatric um, physical therapist out in California. So she um, is somebody that I found out about um, through Instagram because she was posting a lot of really cool information and lots of studies um, related to the geriatric population. And then this young woman right here, um, her name is Carly Berryman. She was really interesting because she started a company um, in which uh, they introduce virtual reality to senior living facilities. So that was really, really fascinating. Um, but my season two people are, are from these locations. And that brings me kind of to what I was already talking about a little bit, but how do I find my guests? Um, one is Google search. The other is referrals. Um, Instagram is a huge resource, um, which, you know, I don't expect a lot of people in this age group to use Instagram, but I have been able to find some really interesting people through that platform. Um, you know, Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, Twitter. Um, and to me, I'm kind of looking at it from two different perspectives, or at least two questions that I'm trying to answer. Is this somebody who is doing something unique from what he or she has done before? And that's really the underlying um, criteria for me. So I'm not interested in people who have done the same thing for the last 50 years. I am more interested in somebody who has really reinvented themselves um, or is doing something just really different than something that they've traditionally done. So whether it's a change in careers or a new hobby or a new mission, um, that to me is more interesting. And of course it has to be interesting to me. Um, I have said no to a lot of um, uh, suggestions in part because they didn't meet one or two of these criteria. And right now I'm in the middle of season three, which um, will end next week. So my last episode of season three is going to be um, next Tuesday. And I decided kind of on a dare to myself that I wanted season three to focus specifically on people with animal stories. And um, that was a lot harder than I expected it would be because, um, you know, it's hard enough finding cool people doing um, interesting stuff, but then adding that other segment of having an animal involved is a bit more challenging. But um, because it took me so long or, you know, it took me a, hard, a long time to find these people, I decided to limit it to seven episodes. Um, and so, this is where the listing here is where the individuals are from um, in terms of geography. Um, this guy right here is a radiologist um, in Southern California. He's a full-time radiologist who also happens to be um, basically a video producer for an Amazon children's show. And um, his wife is the, really the founder of the show, um, but one thing he told me is like, you know, my wife would rather have fairies and, and, you know, just random fluffy stuff in it. I want to introduce some science to the show. So that's kind of interesting. Yes. All right. And then the last thing I want to show you is actually just a snippet of um, this next episode, my last episode for season three. Um, this guy who is who works with birds of prey. So I'm just going to play you his intro and then um, we'll just open it up for questions and then we'll be done. So here is Patrick. We put a bird on the glove. We give them a little orientation. We don't ask them questions. We don't tell them we are going to ask them questions when they get back. All they're told to do is go for a walk in a park setting. Parks are public. Mm -hmm. So if People approach them, they don't have to talk. They can if they want, but they don't have to. But I want them to know that they are no longer the center of attention. Mm. The bird is. The people are curious about the bird. All right. 
that is everything I have. <laughs> that was, I know it was kind of long, but I hope that was helpful for everybody.